In this video we'll be doing a demonstration of using an IVC driver from C++ using Visual Studio. For the application we'll start with a completely generic new project so we'll just select a C++ Windows 32 project console application so taking all the default values there's nothing special about this project that we're starting out with. So there's the beginning project. Now Obviously, the point of the demonstration is to use the uh, Ivy driver, but uh, before we begin, let's take a look a little bit at the uh, installation of the uh, Ivy driver and what that looks like. So, the Ivy drivers are conventionally installed in a uh, in under program files in a directory named uh, Ivy Foundation. And within Ivy Foundation, you can see both the Visa directory, which is where the Visa components are. Note that Visa is also one of the uh, standards which is owned by the Ivy Foundation. And then Ivy directory here, which is where all of the drivers will conventionally install, includes a bin directory and an include and a lib, fairly conventionally, 64-bit lib. What we'll be using is Microsoft C and a... Uh, AG34410 library and similarly under the include directory we see an AG3410.h there also as along with several other miscellaneous things. So our first step is we'll come to the solution explorer in our new project and edit the project properties to indicate that we need to pull in that library. This is an easy step to forget so it's nice to do it right away. So under linker input we come to the list of uh, libraries here that are linked in and we just add ag34410.lib to the list. Similarly we need to include the include file which will define the various types that we're using. Having done that, we're ready to get started with our program. So the first thing we need to define is a variable to maintain the status so we can keep track of error returns from the uh, driver calls. And we also need a variable to represent the instantiated, initialized version of the driver. So first the status, which is a VI status variable type. We'll just call that status. Notice that the uh, type here is a type defined by the Ivy Foundation. It's a VI type, so that prefix shows up on all of the uh, standard types that are uh, created by the Foundation. So similarly, we also have the VI session to hold that uh, instance of the driver. So now that we have those, we're ready to start using the driver. All of the driver calls in the IVC driver will begin with begin with AG34410. That helps avoid or it does avoid the namespace collisions that you sometimes get to see when you bring in now we're ready to begin using the driver. The entry points in the driver all begin out AG34410. This is a standard IV requirement. It's also a VXI plug and play requirement that helps us keep all of the names for the AG34410 from colliding with other entry points since all of the uh, function names are global in C. And our first step is to initialize the driver. So if we start to type in initialize, we can see some of the options. Now, init here is the VXI plug and play call. So that's a standard driver. One of the things to realize here is that IVC is really an extension of the VXI plug-and-play Windows Framework drivers, so these same calls show up again. Now, for the sake of this example, instead of calling the generic initialize call init, we'll call init with options because as a part of the demo we'll be using simulation. The advantage of that is, is that this program will run without any physical instruments connected 
and it'll be a little bit easier if somebody wants to reproduce an experiment with it. You don't have to have a, an instrument around. So as we fill in the parameters, the first parameter here is a resource name, which we don't have since it's simulated, just to make a realistic looking uh, address out of it. We put in a visa address. This is typically what you would put in. This would work with a, a GPIB card with a DMM at the conventional address of 27. The next two parameters are Booleans. The first one is an indication whether or not the driver should query the instrument that's attached and verify that it's an instrument supported by the driver. Obviously that has no bearing on our example since it's in simulate mode, but we'll go ahead and turn that on. Again, since this Boolean type is defined by the Ivy Foundation, the true and false for the Boolean is also a VI underscore false and VI underscore true. So I said we would turn on that. Similarly, the next parameter is a Boolean. It's a reset. This just indicates whether or not the physical instrument should be reset before the program, before the driver begins. Um, generally, it's worthwhile to turn that on, but if there's something in the setup of the instrument that you want to preserve, that's provided there. Okay, the next parameter is a string, which allows us to set various options. The only one we're going to use here is simulate, and this is how we'll tell the dr driver that it should be in simulation mode, not try to connect to a physical instrument. So you do that by specifying simulate equal true. Then finally, we pass it the address of this VI session VI, which is where the instance information for the uh, multimeter driver will be kept. So we'll pass that to every call that's made subsequently to the driver. So there's one problem with this as it sits, and that is if an error occurs somewhere in that routine, we need to have a way to capture it. So that is a value that's returned from the call. Basically, all of the IVC function calls do return a status. And if it's zero, everything's fine. So we'll just read the status back and hang on to it. And just to keep the program simple and not allow to add a lot of error checking to it, I'll just or together the status results from the subsequent calls and we can check them at the end. All right, the next step here is to do something useful with the instrument. So we will configure it to make a DC voltage measurement. So again, we can find the call. It's a configure call to do that configuration. And what you can see here is this driver has quite a few different configure calls for the various types of measurements that are performed by the multimeter and we'll just choose DC voltage and uh, first parameter is that VI session parameter that we created on the previous line so we'll continue to pass that into each call and then the range to set up for the multimeter and the resolution of the measurement so we'll just ask for a 2 volt range and a 1 millivolt measurement for a fairly conventional setup now Again, it's tempting to stop here, but one of the things that's generally important to do is to check in case there may be some error. And so for that, we'll need to get the status back from that call. And as I mentioned, I'll do that just by oring in the result. If I get all done and none of the results were non-zero, nothing had an error, then status will still be zero from that first call. All right, now that we've configured for a DC voltage measurement, our next step is to make a reading. To do that, we can kind of explore what that looks like by looking at the read call. And we see that we'll pass in the VI and the time in milliseconds for the conversion. We'll assume 100 milliseconds is about right. And then we need a variable of type VI real 64 for the reading. So we'll just go ahead and type in reading and declare the variable here. So we need, as we saw, VI real 64 reading to be declared. And of course here I just call that reading. I need to pass the address of the reading. And as was the case with the previous calls, we need to monitor the status coming back from the driver. So we'll just or that in again so that we've captured that. That almost completes the program. Let's print out the result just so we can see what we got. A 
always forget my backslash in in these. Then we need to do something so that the program doesn't run off the end. So we'll just down here in front of the return declare a uh, simple character and do a scanf so that it uh, doesn't run off the end. Okay, with that we have a fairly realistic looking program which would do something. But at this point we still have a little problem and that is we haven't closed the driver. Until we close the driver we don't know whether there were uh, until we close the driver the resources associated with it will be held by the instrument and uh, would create a until we close the driver the resources associated with the driver will remain allocated and this could cause a resource leak of various sorts in your program if nothing else if another subroutine were to try to use the instrument it would show up busy because this is being held so fairly simple matter of just calling close to take care of that and we pass the session in that we want to close and that's all there is to that finally we should check the status make sure that there's uh, no problem with that so we'll say if uh, status is not equal to zero then we should uh, print out our error message so there's a nice thoughtful error message and now we have a complete and reasonable program to use the, the driver so we'll try running that and there's our result just printing out a value of zero it's worth noting that most instruments when they're in simulation mode really don't know anything about the device under test that would allow them to return a more meaningful result than a zero so most drivers will return zero or perhaps in some cases a random number but it's usually not particularly uh, relevant that doesn't really undermine the utility of having a simulation mode because as you can see we're able to write our program and get the syntax right in the program without having to have the instrument present now we have a very high degree of confidence when we attach it to an instrument the next step happens but the management of the results when the reading is important of the control flow of our program is up to us so basically this simulation provides a really powerful tool for doing some of the program development and it's also a great tool if you really want to have more complete simulation in your application because it makes sure all of the various driver calls function reasonably and then you have to do something like intercepting the results coming back if you want a more complete simulation solution. So with that we have a complete C application using the IVC driver. Thank you for your interest in this IV training video. There are several other videos available on the IV Foundation website along with getting started guides and getting started videos. All are available at the uh, URL here, http colon www.ivfoundation.org slash resources. Thank you.